Shot is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. Brent Wallace alongside Jason York and Bobby Ryan coming in hot, as always, presented by Botano. Uh, boys, it is mm, Sidney Crosby's birthday, but none of that matters today. Uh, we've got a big <laughs> yeah. show. It's our 100th episode. So yeah. congrats for Bobby. It's his third episode, but for Yorkie and I, uh, congrats. <laughs> Yeah. Well done, boys. Way to carry the torch. 2024 is going to be my year. <laughs> uh, I will say uh, we do have a guest. Uh, he will be a bit. Uh, he's just probably walking some old ladies across the street and delivering food to the homeless. But Josh Norris is stopping by a bit later in the show. I just want to let everybody know. Um, but before that, lots to talk about, including uh, Eric Carlson traded. But by the way, Josh Norris included in an Eric Carlson trade in the first place from Ottawa. Um, should we just kick right off with getting your thoughts on uh, the reigning Norris trophy winner, just the second time in history he's traded uh, by winning. And so the other guy was Doug Harvey, I think in 1971. So Yorkie, you're the defenseman. I'm going to start with you. Your thoughts on this trade. You know, I look at where Pittsburgh's at right now. With the age of their team, I think they're one of the oldest teams right now. But, hey, I, I think it's a good move for Pittsburgh. You bring in Eric right now, Carl, who I, I think he's got at least a couple more good years. And I'm like, he's healthy right now for the first time in a long time. Seems to be happy where he is in his life right now. And he wants to win. I, I know, Bob, you, you know him a little bit better than I do. But I just think he's, I think he's a perfect fit. For, for, for Pittsburgh right now. And San Jose gets a few things back. Um, Montreal's involved in this as well. They're bringing back Petrie. So I like it. Like if, if, if there's any team out there that it kind of makes sense for, I think it makes sense for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Take, take, take one last kick at the can here. You got a motivated Crosby motivated. Like he's going to be excited as hell right now to, to have Eric Carlson, probably the best power play guy in the league come in uh, and help. There's one thing about the Penguins that, that hasn't been great. It's your power play. So, yeah. you know, you can slide Latang over to a one-timer position where he's probably better at, and you have Carl at the top <laughs> distributing. you got Crosby, you got Malkin, Carl, Latang. you got so many options. So I, I think it makes a lot of sense. And for San Jose, it wasn't going to work. He didn't want to be there. He wants to win, um, and they get some assets in return. Yeah, I would agree with a lot of what you said, but I'm just thinking about poor San Jose where they, where they were oh. at there. Um, <laughs> you know... They they actually got some really good players back, and you got a you got a first, although it's protected in the top mm -hmm. ten, which they're not going to pick in the top ten now that you threw Carlson in. Um, yeah. And you know you bring in Montreal to to make the money work. You know San Jose is still paying thirteen percent of that contract, which is a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. But you got you got Carl off the book, and you can start to look to build for the future. I just I just feel bad. I, I mean, I don't feel bad. You can never feel bad for <laughs> business decisions. But San Jose really had Burns there and Pavelski there and whatever oh. you brought him in, and um, everything's just gone to shit. And it's not Carl's fault. It's not a, their fault. It just didn't work. So now you rebuild. If I'm Pittsburgh, I'm pumped. Um, I think your window with those guys, you know, the guys that are getting older, is closing. Um, you call it your core four, whatever you want. And you add a Carlson Carlson becomes your fourth in that core for a couple of years. I think that they realize they can win. I don't know if they have the goaltending to win. That's a different yeah. conversation for a different day. But at the same time, you have a very, very elite group of offensive players, two of which are defensemen that can control the blue line. That's a big, big thing. Um, and it, does it instantly make them contenders? I don't know, but it certainly puts them in the conversation for me. If that power play can get click and if, if, you know, you know, the two guys up front have great ears. It's just, it makes that team dangerous at all times because now you have, you have 60 minutes so 30 minutes each give it. Mm -hmm. It's not 30, but you have Carlson or Latang on the ice almost all game long. Like that's, that's hey, a Bob, huge benefit. What's, what's Ricard Raquel's story? I liked him when he was in Anaheim. Is he legit? You know what? I kind of, he was coming in as I was leaving. He was a young kid. I always wondered that because he was able to play behind a Getzlaff and a Perry and, you know, put some points up. He's very, very skilled. Mm -hmm. um, I just don't, I don't know. I think he's a good second line guy. He's not a guy that you can rely on for 30 goals by any means, but he yeah. gives you some points and he's not soft. Mm -hmm. he, he'll get into the fray a little bit. So mm -hmm. I've always liked this game. I think he's got a lot of patience, um, but he's a very complimentary piece when you're talking the big picture on those things, you know, um, 
and like I'm just seeing it pop in here. It's 60 points last year in a down year. So yeah. I think I think you can put up the numbers that you want there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Pittsburgh made a like they brought in Graves in the offseason, big defenseman. So he's a guy yeah. that you could see him protect perhaps playing with, with Carlson, be a nice little partner for him, a defense first type of guy. So yeah. I, I, I like I I'm with you, Bob. Uh I don't know about you, Wally, but I I, I think for Pittsburgh, why not? Like, why not? I, why not? Like, mm. hey, <laughs> Dubas right now announcing his uh, presence with authority cruises into town. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna yep. add a, a ten million dollar defenseman. So, hey, we all know Dubas is an analytics darling, right? Like he's yeah. Moneyball, and Eric Carlson has been statistically one of the best drivers in the NHL. Like he is an analytics darling. Well, right on, on Dubis, though, I can't, you can't call him Moneyball because he gives it out left, right, and center. Oh, but. that's right. Eh? <laughs> I forgot about it. He's your Moneyball. Ten for you. And 10 He's, for you. Uh, yeah. oh, I, good, I saw eh? something. Somebody was like, oh, dear Lord, Dubis has another D, you know, core four um, and then listed the money and the players. And I was like, yeah, but that, that core four has won before, except for Carl. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, right. And two so, of those okay. core four uh, are going to put as many points up as your bottom two and the other core four. From the blue line, so it's a much better core four. Let's be a little, let's right. be a little honest here. So, yeah. I'm glad Toronto changed the name because it used to be the Big Four. The Big Four, yeah. And I'm sorry, you you can't throw big in front of your name unless you want something. You can't. You I can't. agree. Yeah, like you, I agree. Like, you go back to the Montreal Canadiens; they had the Big Three: Larry Robinson, Guy Lapointe, and Serge Savard. They weren't the Big Three until they won a few cups. Yeah. So, like, come yeah. on. They're and I know it's not, and, and I know it's not the I know it's not the players' fault. They're not saying, "Hey, name us this, name us this. it's a, it's a Toronto thing. Toronto yeah. loves to Toronto loves to overvalue what they have, um, but uh, no, you got to earn it. And the Pittsburgh guys have earned it. They've won. Yeah, they, well, there's no middle ground in Toronto. You're either <laughs> you've either earned it or you're on your way out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough place to be a third line guy. That's for sure. <laughs> but you know, I. I ultimately like the trade. I, you know what? I was going to reach out to Hoffman to see how excited he was or if he was excited or whatever. Yeah. Um, and saw his post and then just kind of left it. But I think he's probably excited to go. He's, I think he's going to be good in the West. Um, yeah. I think he can play. I, I don't know who he's going to play with. I don't even know the lineup out there. I found like, that's a, you know, I have no idea who plays in San Jose. <laughs> I gotta be completely <laughs> honest. So, um, I could see him playing with a Benino who I do know is there and like, and Benino can distribute to him and get him the puck and let him do his thing. So, uh, or you put him and Granlin together on different sides. I don't know if they're where Logan they are. Couture is still out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. How's, I mean, how's he feeling right now? <laughs> that, that guy, I've only had a few run-ins with that guy and I think he's a beauty. I think he's absolutely hilarious and a really good guy. I think he's a really good captain, but he's a great player. I'm, I'm so, he's licking windows right now trying to get out. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like that poor, that poor bastard's a lot, you know, he's watched everybody leave and he's just sitting there going, man. <laughs> and he wants to, and he wants to win so badly. You could tell yeah. like, he's such a good 200 foot player. Like you got to, yeah. You know I, feel what? I, for for him. I forgot the Duke went out there and thank you to our host, Gavin, who's just absolutely crushing it on the direct messages in the background. But if he's playing with uh <laughs> Duclair and Couture, that's a pretty good line. Yeah. Like that, be, that, they'll all be minus 28. Yeah, but they'll light it up on the peeps. <laughs> that's a, <laughs> hey, no. I like that. The Duke was good last year in the playoffs. I liked the, what he was I doing. I like Duke, man. I think Duke's a great player. He, We, we let him go for 1.6. Come on. <laughs> was that what well, But yeah. there was some behind-the-scenes stuff with I the, believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think that uh, he was very happy with the way management was handling some of the off ice issues. Hey, that's, a um, great, that's a great handle, by the way, the Duke. The, the Duke. Duke. Yeah. <laughs> I was, a, I, would, I was a big fan of him though, as a guy and a player. The one thing about, uh, well, there's two things I wanted to bring up, uh, how Pittsburgh actually took on a $10 million player and saved $3.1 million in cap space. Um, I think that gets forgotten yeah. a little bit, yeah. uh, with, uh, San Jose returning, retaining $1.5 million of, uh, Carlson's salary. Also, Pittsburgh, Yorkie, you don't like the old guys. Pittsburgh now the second oldest team in the National Hockey League behind. Bobby, who do you think is the oldest team in the league? I know who it is. I know. I sent you the lo the list by accident. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to take one stab at this. Give me a minute. Um, 
I was going to say wherever Craig Anderson played because the average came up so high. <laughs> but, um, all right. Well, tell me this. Who's the oldest player in the league this year? Ooh. Oh, it's a, def- is it, uh, is Mark Giordano still count? He's still playing, isn't he? Is he, was he, is he back? <sighs> so I'm going to, I'm going to say, him yeah, he signed, he signed a two-year deal with Toronto. I think he is back. I think he is. So my, my guess is going to be, I'm just looking at Dallas. Washington. Washington oh, well, yeah. How do you not know yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, fair enough. So, but not by much, like 30.9 and Pittsburgh's 30.8. Seattle is next, which surprised me. And then it's Boston. Wow. How, how, Boston. how, how does anybody actually know how, how old Ovi really is? <laughs> yeah, no, no, <laughs> like, no. Um, he's not so, an 85. <laughs> <laughs> he's just nowhere. Oh, Yorkie. Like, he was uh, great. He was great at 26. Come on. Yeah. There's a, there's a couple of things. One is the joke that Mike Hoffman finally now gets to play in San Jose. He returns for a second time, but he was flipped. If we all remember the San Jose the first time, yeah. um, which ended up with uh, Pierre Dorian trying to change uh, how he did with deals. Uh, also, uh, the youngest teams in the National Hockey League. Ottawa now listed at fourth youngest behind New Jersey, Buffalo, Columbus, and that's Ottawa. Mm. Just wanted to point that out. Man, Jersey's a good team for being that young. I like that yes. team a lot. I, I like yeah. that team a lot. That's going to so, be a dangerous playoff team to me. Uh, you brought up earlier about the Stanley Cup uh, if they were, if Pittsburgh was any more of a Stanley Cup contender now with the addition of Eric Carlson. Uh, Gavin, if you've put up the board of Botanos, uh, odds right now of the divisions to win, and this hasn't changed, in fact, since the trade uh, of Eric Carlson, the Atlantic division is favored to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, really? Do you guys agree with this, or would you put your money elsewhere? The Atlantic divi- division, meaning... Tampa, Florida, Boston, Carolina. I mean, Toronto. yeah. Um, yeah, I here's the problem with excuse me, with that for me is whoever comes out of there is gonna be dog tired by the team that walks out of the Pacific, which is likely gonna be the same every year in Vegas and Colorado meeting in that, you know, in that last round. Mm. Um so f- you know, th- I think it's the toughest division to get out of, but I would I would edge towards a team coming from the Pacific. For me. Oh, did I screw that up? No, Atlantic Division. <laughs> I, I, I'm not used to the... Probably. You, did you make the board? <laughs> no. no like, there's not a chance. <laughs> no. Car- Carolina's in the Metro, right? That's Carolina's correct. In- yeah. yeah. I, man, I still like Carolina. I like what they did in the offseason. I like what... Uh, I like what Brenda Moore is selling down there in Raleigh. Man, I'd love yeah. to play for that guy. Just so they're gonna have the goaltending. That's gonna be the question. Is is Freddie Anderson like? Is he gonna is he gonna be good enough to get it done? But who knows? You look at the, look at last year, right? Like, yeah, backups galore are leading the way in the Stanley Cup uh, playoffs. Like Very Vegas, true. great great example. So I don't know. Whoever that these things are so tough because so much is indicative on the health of the team at the time. It's just yes. so especially Correct. now. Especially but- now. So in the top five, Toronto is in there uh, with Botano's odds. And Boston sits at seven. Um, and Tampa's at 10. So three of the top 10 from the Atlantic Division. Boston ain't it, winning anything this year. Okay, I'm, just, right I'm just going right. by what it says, Yorkie. Are they making um, the playoffs, though? I, well, so here's my question. Is the Atlantic Division the toughest division in hockey? Mm. Go ahead, Bob. If you're the Ottawa Senators and you're trying to get a playoff spot and you see Tampa, Toronto, yeah. I'm going to say Boston, yeah. all ahead of you, Florida for that matter. Yeah. It's a tough, tough haul to try and find your way up the board. To the top three. I would agree. I would, yes. I, you know what? I will go ahead and say yes to that question. I think the Atlantic Division is the toughest to be in the top three in. The Pacific yeah. is very watered down. You have your top two. Um, the Metro, hmm. not as much up for grabs to me in the Metro. But um, and the central is just the cent. They're out there. Um, I I just think yeah I, I I do. I think the Atlantic Division is the toughest division in hockey. Yes, I will go ahead and say a hundred percent agree with that. I think that that Metro Division is getting better. You it mentioned is. you yeah. mentioned how much you like New Jersey, Bob. Like, yeah, New Jersey's yeah. coming. 
Carolina, the Rangers, they always seem to be in the mix. They got Shesterkin, one of the best goalies in, in yep. the world right now. Washington's kind of on a downturn right now, although holy <laughs> Merry Christmas, Tom Wilson. How's that? Wow. Contract? What is that? How's, how's that Dude, contract? If I'm that guy, I'm probably, oh man. What, yeah. <laughs> I think he's got he... the same agent as me. So, you know, that guy does well for his players, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to agree with you, yes. And then we didn't even mention Pittsburgh, who's got. Pittsburgh's got Carl now. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I, I don't know. I think the top three teams in that division are a lot better than the top five teams. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a, there's a, a bigger drop off there between three to six as there is in the division of, of that Ottawa is looking at, you know? Yeah. Buffalo's coming. Buffalo's, Buffalo's coming. Should, Buffalo's yeah. coming. The Tampa's always good. Toronto's the best regular season team in the world. Uh, so Boston, I still think Boston could miss this year. Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci, like who's playing center for Boston this year? Who's who, who's their number one and number two centerman? Is Charlie Coyle? Is he their number one center now? Uh, In Boston? Who's their number one? Who's, who's I, I got to pull this depth chart up. Um, this was not in the nerd report. No, but I'm just saying if 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 Boston. Zaka. Who, who the hell is Pavel Zaka? Pavel, 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 yeah. Pavel Zaka was awful in the playoffs last year. We're watching him. He's a turnover machine. Like that <laughs> loss of Bergeron is huge, and Big then throwing throwing Krejci. So I know they, their defense is still good, goaltending still good, coaching still very good. Jim Montgomery's a great coach, so they're going to challenge. But I, I think there's a chance they could miss because that's a that's a huge that's a huge loss with Bergeron. Like he's he's so you know he's to me he's the heartbeat of the team. So I and I just don't know who I don't know who you replace him and Krejci with as your one two centers. It's, and, it's interesting. And Bertuzzi's, they and they lost Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi's gone as well. So he, he might have been their best player in the playoffs. And I forgot about Ta Taylor Hall's gone. Uh, yeah. Nick Felino is a, you know, Bob, he's a, he's a guy that's so integral inside your dressing room, keeping guys calm. Yeah. I know they still have guys, but those are all, that's a lot of leadership gone out we, of that room. We didn't even talk about, he went from being a healthy scratch to a $4 million guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like, yes. What's going good on? For Nick. Good for Nick. Like, good. Yeah. Uh, I, I love it. I, actually, I would bring in Nick to any locker room. No, having Me too. Known him since we were 15 and at, at a 4 million price tag, he's probably worth it. Cause he's probably going to yeah. take Bedard right under his wing. He's probably going to help Tyler Johnson, you know, with the culture of that room. But man, <laughs> like, do you think but, he got a call? It was like, is somebody pranking me? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, what about, what about your boy, Corey Perry? Also a four uh, million worm. dollar man. The worm just keeps coming. They're gonna have to carry that guy out of the league. Uh, he'll he will he will play until the, there's dust on his bones. <laughs> I love that guy. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. But um, that room got a lot a lot more fun in in Chicago this year. So I think they're gonna surround Bedard with some really good people. I like that. I like oh, both yeah. those moves absolutely. Well, yeah, yeah. interesting. Chicago's now gone up in age, right? With the addition of those guys, they're now seventh oldest in the league. Yeah, but that's what you got to do. You got to bridge the gap for guys like Bedard to take over. Right. The, you can't just give them the king, you know, the keys. Um, so you got. They did it here yeah. for a bit. Remember, like they were bringing in Eric Goodbranson and yep. um, oh, Braden Colburn and all the guys that they could find as veterans. But it's a lot of the times it just didn't work out. Yeah, for Eric Step on, on it, you know, from the from the on ice stand, and Step got hurt so fast too. But the, uh, from the on ice standpoint, nothing worked. But it's I guarantee you those guys probably instilled some lessons that Brady's using to this day in the room for sure for sure and it's one thing too like when you bring in a guy like Corey Perry like he's won he scored 50 goals he just he's going to command and Nick Felino as well those guys command respect right away and, and Bedard is gonna like he's not gonna have to look and hockey db these guys and say oh who are these guys <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Like, like you'd be surprised some guys are like some guys come in league they have no idea right but like yeah so i i like the moves like it's I'm, they're not going to be a great team but they're gonna they're gonna really build a culture there with bringing in those kinds of personalities yeah i agree i'm i'm very interested to see who they surround bedard with on on a line do yeah, you, yeah. Do you play him with a, the guy that can protect him in Felino, or do you put him with a Perry, or do you just get him out there to score and and light the league up in his rookie year, and you surround them with whoever these guys might be? Is it uh, Hall, whatever Tyler Johnson on one wing, Hall on the other, well, like whatever you decide, right? So, um, 
they're going to set that kid up for a ton of success. And I think he's going to grab it by the, uh, the reins pretty quickly. He, I mean, I think we got the real deal, you know, right there in Chicago. So I'm curious when you came into Anaheim, you're the second overall pick. Did they have those conversations with you of, we think this is the best fit for you to play here or do this, or was there any of those conversations? No, but that was 2007 compared to 2023 where yeah. it was shut up <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and don't get in Pronger's way in the locker room. Be careful what you say in front of so-and-so or when Randy walks in the room, you, you, you scatter out of there. <laughs> so uh, speak. It was, you, you don't speak unless spoken to. <laughs> yeah. I think that lasted up until about 2009, 10. And then it really started to change. Yeah. And like, I came into the oldest team in the league that had just won, right? That made it yeah. much more, um, it made it easier and harder at the same time because it was, you know, Corey and Getsy were a couple years older than me, but there was nobody my age coming in um, at all, really, for the first couple of years. We had some guys get call ups and things like that, but nobody to really kind of grasp all of learning the curves with together. You know, the other rookies my year were Ryan Carter, who's in 83, and, you know, guys that were much older than me learning the ropes at the same time. So it made it harder. And it was a lonelier time for me, for sure. But the guys that were in that room that you could sponge off of, you know, Solani, mm -hmm. Pronger, Niedermeyer, uh, Koivu after that, Getzlaff and Perry, who had won, but were a couple years older. Like, I had it, I had it made. You know, Todd Marchant, who nobody talks about, um, that ran that room. It was awesome. So who was, didn't talk to you? Perry. And it, Perry wouldn't talk to him right away. Yeah. We, yeah, we, would, we were on the ice for 20 minutes a night together, but couldn't get much out of him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But he got he got better quick once he realized that wasn't just going to be a flash in the pan and I was going to stick around a little bit. Um, you know, I I didn't necessarily not talk to anybody. Everybody was good to me as the only real young guy. But I certainly didn't talk to the coaching staff at all. I mean, you and they had no time for me because they they number one, they had just won. They have a locker room that runs itself off of those guys um, that have been around. So there wasn't any micromanaging that would trickle down from the coaching staff for me it really was be seen and be and and, and don't be heard just don't really? rock the boat be the so, first one on, on the ice be the last one off yeah nobody came to you like coaches or did the gm anybody go hey just checking in just want to see how you're doing my gm was brian burke and then bob murray no <laughs> <laughs> no every now and again i'd come up and get smacked upside the head with a with a you know a pep talk um, but it wasn't until my end of my rookie year where you actually got the chance to sit down with them. And I think that was the first time I had talked to Bob Murray and I was up for rookie of the year and we were in Vegas together and we had to like take a, you know, a, a long walk together. Cause I, I dressed improperly. I wasn't told what to wear. Um, so I was running back to my hotel to change and I spent, you know, time with him. And I thought, I think this is the first time I've really talked to him a ton. Um, other than, you know, he was a, and, and now I don't know if this is a case across the league, but my, and Steve wasn't that way, but GMs are in the room a lot more than they were. Um, York, you can attest to the fact you never saw Brian Burke um, or Bob Murray for that matter. They never came to the room. They never wanted to travel with the players. They stayed mm. away. And it was almost like they didn't want any kind of attachment with the guys that they were going to possibly have to move or yeah. they don't want the camaraderie. I don't know what it is, but like, you know, um, and I don't think it's a slight, but Pierre comes into the room and grabs breakfast and says good morning to the guys. We had none of that back then. The only time Brian Burke would come is if he was going to steal my chew, <laughs> like when I was young. Um, so that was it. I'd come in after the locker, or after the game, my chew would be up top. And I'm like, Berkey, <laughs> he got in there again. But that, you know, that was it. That was all you saw of them. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny how the, the, the league just every 10 years or it just changes so much to where you know, guys come in now and there's just – totally different like you you've got well each team has at least three or four player development guys working with these guys before they even come in and get to camp so it's just totally different i remember too and bob brings up the point of veterans like it, it before it wasn't easy because you weren't well, getting welcomed with with open arms like i remember doing skating drills you do the old four corner skating drills uh. so you're in each corner they put the nets up and you do laps I remember guys in Detroit. It was a guy named Ray Shepard. He actually reminds me of you, Bob. I don't know. He's a, he played a great goal scorer, great hands. But Shep, well, not a great skater. And I'd be in his group, and he's like, Berkey, you fucking pass me. I'm going to two-hand you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm like, he's like, pack stays together. We do our laps together. Yeah. So, that was always tough. 
It was always tough for me. I always felt like a donkey at the Kentucky Derby. I'm like, I would always try to find Chris Tierney or somebody else to like cut a deal with. Be like, hey, side by side, no matter what. And then you got, you know, <laughs> you would always right. just have one guy to get out there and lead the pack. But you remember that it would be like, you would you would know if it was going to be a good day or a bad day if he said one lap to begin with. Because if he said one, then you were oh. usually going one, two, three, three, two, one. But if he started at three and you knew you were doing three, four, five, five, four, three. You're like, come on, this is going to be a brutal, brutal we, set. We had, uh, we used to do this on every workday. We had to go up to six and down. Yeah, like, that's brutal. Not, yeah. not so basically, while you're doing six laps, and then the other corner goes, the other corner, the other corner, then you do five, then you do four, three, two, one, then you come back up, or you go one down, wherever, however you want to do it. But it is a bagger. It's a bag. It's you know what? I, I could get through those. For me, it was always the ones that like the ones that killed the groins and the legs and the hips. Stops for and starts. Stop. As soon as you yeah. as soon as you throw that, unless you're doing like blue line, red line, the quick little hitters. Yeah. Where you can get out of it and get right back into the next stop. If you're going the length of the ice and hitting the brakes and then coming back, you're like, come yeah. on, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do we have a game this week? Because I'm gonna feel <laughs> I'm gonna feel this for a month. <laughs> this makes me think of summer skates, which I'm going to get into in just a sec. But first, yeah. uh, we got some business to take care of. Uh, Bobby, Goodness. you are on uh, BEI today. Uh, yes. I just wanted to throw that out there now since it's show 100. Uh, as always, uh, Gavin, our show proudly presented by Botano. Go to botano.ca or download the app. Uh, the award-winning state-of-the-art app is the most user-friendly and advanced betting app for your mobile or tablet. Now, the amazing world of sports always with you at Botano. Hundreds of betting options for events. Uh, try saying game parlays with Bet Builder. Of course, all the future stuff is online. You can pick who you think is going to be the Stanley Cup winner and make it the Ottawa Senators. Uh, Botano, the game starts now. Oh, we're back to the old school screen. I like it. Okay, our show is also brought to you by BEI, Bonisher Excavating, which is a heavy civil general contractor in the public and private sectors. Been helping to shape the Ottawa Valley for a long time. When planning your next project, consider BEI for the aggregate supply needs. You can give them a, or excuse me, you can find them at bonisherexcavating.com or give them a shout at 613-432-1120. And you can get stuff across the board, equipment rentals, aggregate and topsoil sales, all this stuff, highway maintenance, slow down at construction zones. That's it's not on there. I'm just, I'm just really on fire. I had a double espresso right before we started guys. So uh, thank you to Bonisher Excavating for, being part of the coming in hot definitely a 10 out of 10 yeah, it was good uh, i know well yeah. done. Well, I got <laughs> full marks. the um summer, so you guys talked about uh skating and not a lot going on um different than it was back then and i'm thinking now like guys are in all the time now it's I, there's a few guys i know have been here since june skating working out they're all mm -hmm. in at the rink they're all talking they all have these pickleball tournament going on in the on at center ice i'll call it uh because there's no ice in it's it's completely different if i'm not mistaken gentlemen pickleball yeah I, nobody was playing playing <laughs> pickle. hey pickleball is i don't is pickleball big in nashville or in the it, states bob it is it is absolutely the number one growing sport in the country right now it's they're, crazy they're putting these things up every and like i live in the country club right and they have demolished the tennis courts and there are four pickleball. I can, if I'm sitting in my back patio, I can hear the pickleballs all night long until 10 o'clock with the lights on. Yeah. It's huge. I actually joined, you know, this place Wally in Britannia, this place called the Britannia yacht club. It's like an old, old place in Britannia beach, but they got great pickleball courts. Nice. So that's like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, guess it's a, I would just watched it on the other day. I was in uh, the U S and they have the, it's on ESPN all the time, the professional pickleball yeah. tournament, but uh, Drake just bought a team. Who did? Drake. Oh, did he really? Yeah. yeah I, I mean, to me, you play pickleball if you can't in. play anything else. <laughs> like it's just you that's stand basically the head, yeah. That's basically me. I can golf, and I needed another sport, so it's pickleball. Yeah, pickleball. I played it last week for the first time, and I my my Achilles and calves for two days, so I'm out. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> pickleball. Yeah, it was bad. My Achilles have always been bad, but. Um, I, I was I was generally trying to walk in the morning, so yeah, wow. it's a no go for me. Uh, I, I do like that you don't have to move a ton if you get up to the net and you can just kind of stay there. And they call it thinking or something like that. Thinking, but, uh, yeah, yeah, thinking. yeah. Stay to the I kitchen, like, though. Uh, yeah, yeah. So to get back to your question, Wally, and um, not go completely off the rails on a sport that doesn't exist um, or shouldn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> um, yes, I don't know. 
I'll, I'll just put this in the context. I played in arguably the most desirable place in Anaheim, um, in Newport Beach, in Oven and Orange County. And if there was ever a place where guys were going to stay during the summer, that was it. And nobody stayed. And nobody was there in June. Nobody was skating together in July. Mm-hmm. Guys came back for kids in school at the middle of August, give or take. And then they were there for a month before camp and other guys filtered in two weeks beforehand. So um, I think it speaks to the times have changed in the league, but also the closeness to the team. The guys want to be around each other, which I, I think is a great thing. Um, but, you know, I never even started skating till the middle of August for a lot of my, you know, I it was yeah. like a, a month to gear up kind of thing. You showed up in September. If I'm not mistaken, they always every year they would say, "When are you coming back?" And I said, "When's training camp?" Yeah, <laughs> they'd be like the 17th, and I said, "Well, I'll see you the 14th." <laughs> so there's uh, why am I leaving two, Idaho? You know? Oh yeah, why would you? Why would yeah. you? Two the two records I don't think will will be beat was one. I think I told this story before. Paul Coffey came to camp in Detroit and had not been on the ice. Wheeled a brand new pair of skates out of a box, put them on. <laughs> No Amazing. bucket either. Did training camp with no bucket. <laughs> I love that. The best skater on the ice. Didn't never skated the entire summer. And then you Tamo Solani, Bob. He we came back like a week or two early to Anaheim and we're all skating. And then Tamo cruises into town about two days before camp starts. We're like, you coming to skate with us, Tamo? He's like, No, no, I'm skating with my buddies, their beer league team who are on after us, like a bunch of guys, like a Come bunch on. of a bunch of local guys from California that were his buddies. And he skated with them once and then came to camp. Still was um, you know, Tamo, such a great skater. Didn't matter. It yeah. Did, didn't matter. And he's yeah. he's built like a truck. Yeah. And that guy used to I never I would go through two pairs of skates in a year and it would get to the point where the trainers had to pull my skates out of my stall and put new ones in. Cause I just hated breaking them in. I was really, I, my feet always had a really tough time with it, but Timu used to come in between periods and put a new pair of skates on that he would go run under the hot water in the shower, strap them yeah. to his feet and go out there. And I'm like, how? And like, I, there was a jealousy factor there because I knew for me to be comfortable in a new pair of skates, I needed three weeks in them already. Um, and these guys just, some guys just like Dion Phaneuf, the same way. They just pull them out of the box, put them on, and yeah. they're good to go. It drives me nuts. I needed two. I was pretty good. I could do it in two skates. I'd uh, yeah. put them in the oven, then two skates, and I was good. Oh, man. I was, I was, yeah, I was 10 to 12 skates at least, at least yeah. before I would wear them in a game. Really? Are you a yeah. Bauer guy, though? Were you Bauer or CCM? I don't know what I wore. Um, <laughs> Come on. Can't remember? I- CCM, I would say. I would have to look. I remember when John, when Johnny Forget, um, when I got bought out, Detroit guy called me and said, "What kind of skates do you wear? What kind of sticks do you wear?" And I said, "I have no idea." So I grouped him and Johnny Forget <laughs> on a text together, and they got it all. And Johnny just laughed at me. He's, he said, "You're never gonna have an easier player. He doesn't care what he wears one bit. Just put something in a stall, and he'll figure it out." Because I had no clue. <laughs> But, um, but I do think, I, cause I remember the skate said jet speed or something on them. And I think that's a CCM brand. CCM. Those are yeah. CCM. Yeah. Yeah. So I wore those, but that's I, funny. um, so, yeah, I never switched. I, I was with Sherwood for 10 of the 15 years, you know, that I was in and around the league. So yeah. when they kind of got sold and out, I was, you know, my last few years, I was like, whoever could make the closest thing to my curve was what I was using. And I, I think I used like true and something yep. else. And then I ended with warrior. So I don't understand. I'm, I'm being totally honest here. How a th- four-time 30-goal scorer, a second overall pick, isn't more in tune with his gear? I it just, yeah, I don't know. It never mattered to me. Um, like, if I if I put something on and I could tell right away it didn't work, I would rule that out, obviously. But I used to get absolutely buried out there because I wore these big shoulder pads because I had shoulder injuries coming out of juniors. And I wore them forever. Um and I, I was like, I'll take the beating from the other players and even trainers that are making fun of me because I had like this big wing built onto one of my shoulders because I simply, my shoulders were fine. I just wouldn't switch until <laughs> eventually, like when I got to, when I got to Detroit, I still had a couple pieces of equipment from Owen Sound. My junior <laughs> team. So, you know, you talk about Crosby and the famous jock, but like a lot of yeah. players just find something that works and they're like, yeah. Yeah, these elbow pads aren't up to code. And I'm like, well, they're, they're working and we're leaving them because Sho- shoulder yeah. pads, especially you get used to a nice pair of shoulder pads. Like you'll wear those babies for like 10 years. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was the same way with a girdle. I had a girdle that wasn't even being made anymore. 
Yeah. Um, and I wore it till the fact where it would like, you would hang it on the thing and it would touch the ground cause it was so soggy and wet and gross. And, um, <laughs> you know, they'd have to dry it differently, but I, they didn't make them. They were an old pair of Bowers that I found in a storage room and I wore them my entire career until I got to Detroit my last year and I had to switch out of them. And I was, I was extremely frustrated that I had to switch out of them. So Zach Smith. Uh, was using a different skate, whether it was a tax or whatever, but the tongues were different and they didn't make them anymore. And so I believe Johnny, forget, went around and scavenged uh, scavenged uh, tongues from skates that he could to have. Yeah. I think ended up with Zach having like 10 extra pairs of tongues. And I'm like, this is bizarre. I believe some, it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there are players with some different... Uh, likes i should put it I guess. yeah i wore and it was funny because getzloff and perry when i was in anaheim turned me on to and we were probably the only three players in the league as we were on a line wearing them but they were a pair of tights that had the jock built in but they were a certain brand i can't remember the brand um and then i got traded and the trainer there and it wasn't johnny yet it was somebody else um what not woody is it Allegrino? Woody was there early Scotty, on. That's Scotty, yeah. yeah. He said, buddy, I can't find these anywhere. So he called Anaheim, and they shipped out the last two pairs of them because Getz and Pairs had moved on into something else. So I wore those two pairs of whatever for nine years, every single wow. skate every single skate (laughs) and like to the point where like they were so you know they were so gross i had i was like taping them up onto my (laughs) leg yeah yeah i just i just i didn't like change in my equipment at all so um you know i wasn't particular about anything except for what was comfortable that's it yeah yeah uh yorkie did you ever play in cooperalls (laughs) i did you know what i did in junior i had i wore them in junior they're awful that's incredible. That's incredible. And I, <laughs> it's so bad. Hey, if you wipe out with Cooperalls on, you just keep sliding because they're because it's nylon yes. down your whole leg, right? Yes. So yeah, so, I wore them but, my first year junior when I was playing uh in Hamilton. It was crazy. I still have some pictures around the house somewhere. I love what I thought the flyers looked really cool in them, but that uh, Hartford uh, warm too. Hartford yes, warm right. too. Um you talked about uh, sliding when the new socks came in from, and I feel like it was the Oh five lock. Yeah. They changed the socks. There was the concern of yeah. sliding down the ice in those. They had to, it took them a bit for trying to uh, come up with the right pattern, if you will, so that they were still like the old socks of the, the used and big, uh, the, those, the, those socks too, like way easier to cut through too. Like that was a little bit of an issue. Like yeah. the old big thick socks, yes. well, uh, not that it's a lot of protection, but it's a little bit more to go through. Uh, so, Bob, have you heard from our good friend? Uh, yeah, I, I was didn't want to. My phone's blowing up. Um, Josh Norris texted me and said, "Be on in five, and that was at two thirty, and it is now two forty. So he's absolutely crushing it. And then uh, <laughs> our Ottawa fans that are hearing us, well, I'm I'm getting a lot of updates from Cody so- Bass at the moment, who is my realtor down here. So. Um, yeah, I, I got stuff, I got stuff happening behind the scenes folks, but apparently when I bring a guest on, they can't be on time and it looks poorly on me. So, yeah. <laughs> well, this will, this will be in the post show report. Um, <laughs> hey, hold on. Why... So how, did, how does Cody Bass get into real estate? Like, how does this happen? I don't know. I will say he's extremely good at his job though. Very like extremely thorough, uh, really knowledgeable. He started building houses and flipping them down here. Um, yeah. And then started a company with another guy. So they're, he's absolutely crushing it down here from what I understand. Uh, right. He's probably, I'm driving him nuts because every time I f- see a house, I don't make an offer. Um, <laughs> and then, and then I make an offer and it gets into a bidding war and then I bid out and I say, I'm out of here. So uh, he's seen, a, I've seen a lot of houses with him and bought nothing. <laughs> so the friendship's on, <laughs> on the rocks a little bit. But. How much, I'm, I'm curious, Nashville's housing market must be just exploding right now. Yeah, it's, like it's everybody. Real. Everybody wants to live. Like we're going down, a bunch of couples. We talked about this end of the end of September. I can't believe it's like going to New York City now. Like it holy, is. Sh- yep. holy shit! Yeah. It's New York City prices on hotels now. It's amazing, man. I went downtown for dinner last night on a Sunday. I, I think we got down there on six thirty, and just every single restaurant full. People walking around. It's, it's just it's a full on. I mean, that area is a full on party. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, All right. Yeah, you're gonna without. Have fun. Without further ado, uh, Gavin, 
Uh, play the video as we uh, get ready for our guest. Oh, we got him. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Look, slides it back to Batherson, back across. Norris, a hard shot, scores! Josh Norris, his first game. Drops it back, scoops up, feeds that back. Norris, a shot, scores! Josh Norris, power play goal. Devon across, he goes, Norris scores! It's time! Uh, what, what an it makes me excited for the season, I know that. Josh, welcome to the show. Holy cow. Intro. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you're on time. Um, so uh, how are things, by the way? They're good. I, uh, just, I'm, I'm at my parents' house right now, and we got a little – I got a, a puppy about a month ago or two months ago going nuts. So hopefully she doesn't, like, bark and ruin the whole interview. But month ago, What kind what of dog? dog? Friendly show. Uh, you want to see her? Yeah, yeah, bring her on. Let's see her. The lighting's great there too. Perfect. Yeah. Phone <laughs> is the right way. Oh, what a good Here? looking pup. Yeah. Yeah, this is Bailey. Love it. Ah, this is Bailey. She's, is she making the trip to Ottawa? No, no. Unfortunately, I uh, left my uh, my parents with that one. They could take care of her. <laughs> See, <laughs> I did that too. Actually, I got a. I I bought a husky and then. <laughs> left them with mom and dad so they, they had a dog for 13 years <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> old impulse buy it was great i bought her and got to see her for like whatever two weeks and then me and my brothers moved out and we lived together not at home so they kind of they were stuck with all the you know indoor pooping and peeing and shit like that <laughs> that's tough what is that a doodle so, or something what is that josh is that a doodle you got what kind of dog is that a screen english cream golden Trier. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. That, he's awesome. Beautiful. There's uh, tons of questions that people want to know, uh, but I, I need to know if you're part, because I know you've been in Ottawa. I don't know how long you've been here, but or back and forth. Uh, are you part of the pickleball group at the Canadian Tire Center? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I was last year until I got hurt, so that kind of went away. But um, I was actually in town like a week ago and me and shabby were playing because they have it set up like where the rink is right now because the ice isn't in and uh i gotta give him props he's a good player and uh he beat me three out of five so Ooh. yeah wow. there's okay. players though like a lot of the euros are good Tim yeah forzy's forzy's really good actually i kind of smacked him last week but he's he's usually pretty <laughs> <laughs> are, are there standings involved oh yeah there's like a whole like pickleball world rankings i don't know where i am on but <laughs> do we still do the um do we still the pre pregame soccer world rankings or did they leave with Pajot? I haven't seen those since I've been there, so they must have uh they must yeah. have left. Yeah, I kind of I kind of figured Pajot ran the world ranking system with Andy and those guys. So I fi I figured it might have left, but uh yeah, we had a we had a whole intricate system for points and everything earned for <laughs> two touch before the game. And that sometimes got way more serious than it should have been. <laughs> and arguments and yeah, yeah. So I could only okay. imagine summertime when you're trying to manufacture some kind of adrenaline, what the pickleball world ranking system is. <laughs> if uh, Josh, if you are uh, playing pickleball and I know you're playing golf, there's always people want to know how's the shoulder. Are you a hundred percent and are you back to training normally for the upcoming season? Yeah, I feel good. Um, the first like four to five months was like, that was the main like kind of grunt work. And um, I kind of, started to, to turn the corner probably about a month ago or so and i'm feeling really good um and i've been on the ice uh, a ton and yeah i'm back to training normally now which is kind of nice because i mean i'm still obviously going to rehab and stuff but um at the start it's a lot because you're training you're doing rehab you're skating you're uh doing massage or whatever so it's just kind of a lot but um yeah i feel good right now yeah okay, josh I, I i heard josh I heard you're at the hunt club hitting bombs off the tee there. I, I, some people I know were watching you off the tee and they're like, shoulder looks pretty good. Like there was some <laughs> pretty good drives. Uh, I mean, my game looks pretty good off the tee. And then when I get in from about a buck, that's where it usually nips me in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I would, I would, I'm the exact opposite. So, um, but it's good you're swinging because if you're swinging a golf club, you'll be, you'll have no problem getting back into the game. I, I can, and I can relate just be, 
be thankful all you have is a dog. I remember with the with the triceps injury, balancing rehab, training, trying to get on the ice when you have two young kids. So I'm gl- glad you got it out of the way now and you're not having to do all that stuff at four or five o'clock in the morning, right? So you can have some semblance of a day with the family during the summer. Made it a lot more difficult. Like having kids, like being injured and having to do all that. Yeah, yeah, no. You throw a couple of kids in the game, <laughs> as any parent knows. Game changer. Yeah. Game changer. Um, so there, I, I, I don't want to talk a lot about hockey and injury, whatever, but there was talk about, uh, preseason games and whatever are, are you expected to play preseason games? Um, I mean, yeah, I would, I would assume so. My goal is to be ready for opening. So, um, you know, obviously like preseason games, and if that's the case. So, um, I don't think I'm just gonna you know, get thrown right to the wolves. I'm, I'm not yeah. if obviously if things are looking good and, um, I think they are right now, then that should I'm, I'm thinking you finally moved past the going to Winnipeg the day of group. I think you're probably into the get to stay home group now. Um, is the uh, I'll ask you about Vladimir Tarasenko because there's a chance as we all debate the lines uh, oh, yeah. on social media. Do you know anything about Vlad? Have you spoken to him? Uh, are you excited with the potential of possibly being well, it's either going to be him or Brady Kachuk, which uh, seems to be pretty good. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously, I don't know what's going to happen, but um, I've, I've spoken to Vlad briefly over text and just said, hey, welcome, like, super excited to have um, And we just, whatever, a few more texts, because I think he's trying to find a place and whatnot. So, um, but yeah, either way, I mean, um, it's exciting, um, just the whole group that we have, and, and I'm e- eager to get back. Whoever I'm going to play with isn't, um, you know, really up to me. So, um, just excited right. to be kind of back and, um, I'll probably be back at the end of the month. I think I was telling Bobby I'll be early September, but I'm, I don't know. I was, I got excited the other day and, um, I'm like, why don't I just go up a little bit early? So I'll probably be in town. It's like everybody's in town. Yeah. There, there's a, especially as like August kind of rolls around, there's a lot more guys that come in. Um, and even last year, like everyone was there by, I think the third of September, which typically is like a little early for, yeah. When, a little bit later this year, but um, yeah, guys are excited to come back. When's camp open up this year? I think the twenty first, which is oh. like later than usually. Yeah, is. yeah, that's that's got. I mean, that's seven days later than usual. Um, yeah. Well, they, they yeah they certainly cram them in these days, don't they? <laughs> like you got. I I haven't seen the schedule, but I'd be interested to see how many back to backs there are this year. Do we know Wally? I, I I don't know. It wasn't in the nerd report. That's, gotta, a later, <laughs> yeah. that's a later thing. All right. Well, let's, I, I, mean, I want to know about weddings. I want to know okay. how many weddings you've attended this year. Uh, I think just two. There have been a couple that um, I've been invited to that I just didn't have the time for and couldn't go, unfortunately. But um, yeah, a good, good buddy of mine got married in northern Michigan, which was awesome. It's a beautiful place to get married. And then obviously Brady got married uh, a few years now. And, and that was a riot. That was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I was happy for him. Obviously, a, a special day for him and Emma. So there's a lot of guys there, and and um, there was no shortage of fun. That's for sure. <laughs> what was the reaction like in the room when Mr. Brightside was being played? I, so I think that came on at the rehearsal dinner, like the night before, and it came on earlier than I thought it was gonna. Like obviously, I knew it was coming on at some point, right? Um, but it, was, it came on early, and it was it was, it was great. Did you sing? Oh, God, no. You don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do a little bit, but I ain't singing. Uh, that wedding seemed to be like, I don't know, by the table listing, it was everybody under the sun. Uh, were you surprised? I don't know if surprise is the word, of how many senator players were there. It just seemed like everybody was invited. Yeah, um, I think everyone was pretty much invited for the most part. Uh, there was a lot of guys there, just obviously guys from Ottawa that were there, but guys from around the league that yep. uh, great goes in a tight with, and I feel like he's cousins with everyone. Now, but, um, yeah, there's a lot of guys there, and, and um, like I said, it was a lot of fun. What, was DJ there? Um, I don't think so. I didn't see him. Okay, so but <laughs> DJ was coach was there. <laughs> hold on, DJ was at Austin Watson's, who just got married on the weekend. Uh, here's a picture of him from the wedding. 
I'm just curious, Josh, have you ever seen DJ Smith dance? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know where I'd see him. Dance. <laughs> Not after a big win? Mm, we might have to get that involved this year. I don't know. Got <laughs> All right. I was just curious if he was any kind of dancer on the, because uh, it'd be good video for you guys to use later. <laughs> yeah. Um, or bad. I will go back because there wasn't a lot of, well, obviously we didn't chat with you a lot during the year. Alex Debrink, you had a brief chance to play with him. Are you disappointed that he didn't stick around or surprised or any of that? And I understand everybody's entitled to move along. I'm not trying to get into that. I'm just curious of what you may have thought because uh, you had the potential to be uh, his centerman at one point. Yeah, for sure. I was, um, was obviously disappointed. Didn't really know exactly what was going to happen. Obviously there was some chatter about him possibly leaving, but, um, I mean, yeah, it was kind of unfortunate with me getting injured this year because I was looking forward to, to playing with yeah. him. Didn't really get a, you know, a ton of game to do that. But, um, yeah, like you said, I mean, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Um, you know, did what he thought was best for him. And, um, you know, that's kind of out of, out of our control. So, yeah, uh, obviously we'd love to have him, but um, I'm happy for his hometown now. And, um, he has a good Josh, you got you got you got to be pretty fired up though, because now you had your surgery, you're healthy, you're going to be 100. percent And you look at the D, you got Chick right now, you got Zub, you got Shabbat. You look at what Sanderson did last year, and you look at the forward group. You guys were pretty, you guys are pretty deep, and you got the goaltending, you got the new goalie, and you got two good goalies. So I'd have to say, like you, you guys to me, like you guys look like you're ready to be a playoff team. So. The group's got to be pretty excited about at least when you look at this team on paper. It's it's got to it's got to make you pretty happy to to see the group that's that, that's going to start training camp, right? Yeah, I love it. Um, I think we're pretty strong in in every area. To be honest with you, like I look up the middle, I think we got some great players and um, have some scoring on our on our wing, and then I think we got some really good depth players. And um, and obviously adding Chicky at the end of the year was was huge, and and he's a hell of a player. And yeah, the back end looks great. Um, more so, I think he's going to take a big step. And um, obviously, adding Corpusalo, I think is is pretty great goalie. So, I think we're solid in in a lot of areas. And um, like I said, everyone's excited to kind of get back to town and um, got a few new faces. So it'll be nice to get there a little bit early and get back. But um, yeah. excited, man! I think we got a great great group and just you know, can't, you can't wait. To all six of the top, I'll say the top six players, uh, well-worded Wally, can score, <laughs> let's say, 25-plus goals. Which one of you isn't going to score 20 this year? <laughs> <laughs> Put him right on the spot. Uh, I don't, I mean, I'm, I, I'm kidding. That's, that's not fair. I'm just curious, like, how do you spread around the offense of the top six players? Um. I mean, there's never enough offense, right? So, you know, I mean, I think everyone's got a chance to, depending on what the other team wants to do, whoever's playing with each right. other, have to match up with somebody. And then I think that'll leave it a little bit more wide open for, for the other group. And um, it's exciting to, to kind of see that. I haven't really looked at it like that on the screen before on paper. Um, and it's just exciting to see that. And, um, you know, obviously Brady and Timmy and yeah. G last year. So whether or not they decide to keep them together. Like I said, it's not, not up to me, but I, I thought they played extremely well together. And, um, you know, I got to see those guys play from the 300 level plenty of times and popcorn had a great time watching them. <laughs> so, so I, I'm, I'm of the other, of other opinion, Josh, because I remember when you guys finished that last year, when you had 35 that year, you and Brady and Drake had such good chemistry and, Man, I just – you had the injury, things changed, and I don't expect you to answer answer this question because I don't want to put you on the spot. But, man, you guys have some chemistry. You have to admit that. But between you and Drake and Brady, like you you guys seem to know where each other is on, are at all times on the ice, and it just seems like you you just have that little sixth sense about each other. Yeah, we do. Um, you know, obviously, I, I loved every second of playing with, with those two guys. Uh, I mean, how, how can you not so, um Brady's, you know, like I said, I, I think I was on here last year and when he was playing well, he took his game 
another level. And I think he's going to do it again this year. I, shit, I just saw him two weeks ago, and he's um, he's just a brick shit house. Like he's a big dude. <laughs> Um, I think he's going to score a lot of goals this year. And, um, you know, I mean, Drake go back to even our Belleville days. That's kind of where it started. And, um, you know, we, we enjoy spending time together, um, you know, away from the rink as well. And I think it's such a and I love playing with him. So, like I said, whatever uh, yeah. you know, line combinations they want to use is, is kind of up to them and whatever they think is going to work best. But there's, um, there's a lot of options out there, that's for sure. Yeah. Are, and D, and is DJ there, is not afraid to mix and match. Like if, if, if guys, and that's the thing in an 82 game season, you're going to see a line combination that you're going to ride for a little bit, but there's going to be a ton of mixing matching between that top six, in my opinion, to, to find the combinations on a given night. So he's good. Josh is going to play with everybody on every wing at some point in the season. You're just going to, I don't think you're ever going to get to a point in that top six where you say we have a definitive top six and it's set. Guys are going to be able, you know, guys are going to come in and out. There's going to be injuries. That's the way things go. So um, I was always a big believer. And I think Yorky said he was a big believer in pairs. Yeah. And that's, mm -hmm. that's a, for me, like, I think Josh pairs so well with Drake, um, but he also pairs very well with Brady. So it, it, it's just a matter of finding the complementary pieces in that top six to, to go with the top two pairs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, Brady has, I thought him and Timmy had, you know, great chemistry especially kind of down the stretch and obviously G2, like all three worked well together. So, um, and I love playing with Drake. I love playing. With it's kind of hard to just pick one guy. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you're spot on there probably. Uh, okay. So you may not know this, but you do hold a franchise record, if you will, for goals per game scored, uh, before you, uh, 24 and younger, uh, a point four one you uh more than any other player in senator's history i'm just do you feel the pressure to try to get back to 35 next year um no not really i mean i obviously want to have a great year but um in reality i haven't played in a long time so who knows what's going to happen it's a great league and uh, mm -hmm. we'll just kind of see how things end up but um i put in a lot of work this summer and um yeah, I, I think I've just been grinding for a long time, and um, I believe in myself, and uh, you know, know that I can have a great year no matter what the circumstances were. So, um, not going to put any limits on myself, and and um, just kind of roll with it. Okay, I'll throw this out there. I feel like this top six, although I don't know Vladimir Tarasenko, so I'll leave him out. Uh, could care less how many points or goals they have on their stat line if they were to be in a playoff spot. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a fair statement. At this point, I mean, I think what it's Brady's sixth year and Shabby's sixth mm. year, and um, you know, it's Timmy's what fourth year. It's going to be my fourth year. There's a lot of guys that have um, you know been there a lot longer than I have. But I mean, I I, I feel like it's been um, you know longer than we obviously want to. So um, whatever it takes this year is um, is is what's going to be the answer. So it doesn't matter who scores, whatever however many points um i think we're a tight enough group to kind of that's really important so however we get there it doesn't matter as, as long as we get there okay uh, there's one question i have left of hockey before we move on to some fun stuff i feel like is um ironically or coincidentally you scored your very first nhl goal on the power play in that exact same spot we shouldn't be surprised i'm just curious can you tell me do you have a target in mind before the puck comes, because you obviously have got to one time it, or is it just a feel? Like on on a one timer, you mean? Yeah, like when that puck comes over and you're hammering it in, do you have a spot picked? Um, honestly, no. I, I kind of just like let it rip, and wherever it ends up, it ends up. Uh, I, sometimes I can tell, like if the goalie's late getting there or whatever, you might try to just get it up anywhere in the net and it has a good chance of going in. But, like, if the goal is just straight on, kind of depends on where the guy in that front is standing. So I, I guess I have an idea of where I want it to go, but I, nine times out of ten, I just hammer the thing and hope it goes in. Or, or rebound, you know? So. Fair enough. <laughs> so, I mean, it's a legit answer. Um, so I, I, yeah. I, a lot of shooters are like that. I, was, I wasn't. For me, I always wanted the, the – I always, I always figured it had to be 18 – 
to 24 inches off the ice and you had to beat the goalie to the post. So I was always aiming short side to try to beat the goalie to the post. And like he, he did mention that a lot of times you can tell if the goalie's late and you can beat him. But that was, I wanted to make him make a save off the ice. That was, that was the big thing for me whenever I had those one timers, make sure he has to make a save off the ice because they can cover the bottom of the net. It's harder to get across to cover the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to know, I was thinking the other day, which teammate would you pick for certain things? If your life was on the line and one of your teammates had to answer a mathematical equation, who would you want? I thought you were going to say who's, who would pick up the phone if you called them, but that changes things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's too many guys on the team that would be able to do that, Wally. That's what, I, that's what I'm trying to get at here. I'm trying to – well, I'm, I'm just going to go right to the college guys. We'll ax all the junior guys. Yeah, yeah. You're allowed to put the pressure back on yourself if it's you. Oh, it's definitely not me. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> – like, I, This seems I like know. a Shane Pinto answer. That was my, that was my guess. Could, could Zub be a math guy? Could be. <laughs> Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me. That guy, I don't know. I feel like he's got something up his sleeve. Like, I just don't know everything about him yet. I feel like – um. I feel like that should be something easy to answer. Who are our college guys? Me, Pence, Bray- Sandy, Sandy. Oh, maybe uh, I don't know. He's a wild card. Maybe Sandy. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Jake I'm- Sanderson. Fair enough. He looks smart. So there you go. Um, <laughs> do you have any special or hidden talents? Um, I mean, I speak German. I don't know if that's like. No, it's pretty good. I'm going to count that. <laughs> yeah. why, why do you, where did you learn to speak? Oh, because your uh, your dad played in Germany, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I used to be fluent when I was young. And I, I've lost a lot, just having them back. But I mean, I can, I could get my way around if I was in a restaurant. That's awesome. So, yeah. so uh, Josh, could you, could you technically play in the German league as a non import? Uh, no, I don't think so because I don't have my passport, but, um, there's some rule I think where if you play your first seven years of, of um, like hockey there, I think you're, yeah, yeah. You, you're like entitled to some whatever. Um, so I, I mean, maybe yeah. my brother, so he could technically play there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, do you have any weird foods that you eat or make? Um, weird foods. Not really. I mean, I'm pretty standard. I just like steak, sushi, pasta. That's about it. That's all I eat. Ice cream. Pretty boring, honestly. Okay, so here's something, guys, I need some help on. My daughter the other day is like, eggs are boring, doesn't like ketchup. She put salad dressing on them. On eggs? Is this this acceptable? Ugh. That's what I thought. Just throw some cheese on there or something, Wally. She doesn't like, she, yeah, she doesn't, it's boring to her so she tried to she, she one of those pizza. kids that doesn't like cheese but she'll eat pizza <laughs> she did put cheese on them she still didn't she found it just yeah. blah so i'm just curious if salad dressing is an acceptable form on eggs i i think the short answer is no i think <laughs> hot sauce is about as far as it's allowed to go in my opinion yes yeah yep. hot yeah. sauce okay. that's it hot sauce fair enough frank the frank's red hot yeah yeah go with the frank's there you go. Josh, where's your uh, where's your go to sushi spot in uh, in Ottawa? You got a go to? Um, honestly, no. I just go on Uber Eats and see what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he grew up on Michigan sushi, so it's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Are you alone now? Like, uh, do you have a roommate? Are you bringing in like a young guy for you this year? No, it's it's just me next year. Um, yeah, just me. I like being. Yeah, it's amazing. But it, I just looking at headshots of like Claude Giroux today on NHL.com, and then there was pictures of Brady and you. Like how quickly you guys grow up and change. I don't know if you ever go back and look at your headshots, how different uh, they are. I saw. I actually saw those with G today. That was pretty funny. Might have taken a screenshot of one or two of them. Just for- <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. It, yeah. It's, but it's funny how, or not funny, how quickly your career goes by. All of you can probably attest to this. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. You know, for the first couple of years, and if it's not going well, you're like, well, there's next year, there's next year. And then all of a sudden you're in the middle of it and you don't realize next year's, you know, you're on the back nine pretty quickly. Um, and it, yeah, it goes by fast. And then it, you know, a lot of guys don't get their call their own shots on how it ends. So, um, you know, the guys that we've had on the show are guys that are going to be able to, for the most part, but, uh, a lot of guys just are done before they know it, you know? Um, he- yeah. So Bob, you signed yeah. your papers. You have you signed those papers yet? I still, you know what? I don't have a printer, so no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have a, I, I'm, my printer works about as well as the webcam that sits on top of my computer. <laughs> so, Listen, no. I'm fifty. I'm fifty three. I still haven't signed my retirement. I mean, okay, so they don't need to. I you know, know how to log. I can now log into the alumni website and get the Best Buy discount if I need it. That's there you go. <laughs> hey, listen, it's not as good as the current discount. I'm telling you that. I believe I, it. I, I'm told there is no papers to sign. Like you don't have to sign papers. I hope not because I never signed anything. Yeah. Um, what are you yeah. talking? About? I have absolutely no idea what's going on. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> We're talking about retirement papers. If we've actually officially signed anything, well, you, be, you basically said Josh is getting near the back nine here. He goes, no, that's not what he said. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> um, <laughs> Josh, what's your favorite book and TV show? Um, I don't read many books, Wally, so I don't. I, <laughs> I'm mad. Um, TV. We'll just skip to the TV show. Yeah, suits right now, and uh, I, I don't know. Have you guys seen Suits? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I haven't Love finished it. it, but yeah, yeah. Great I'm, television show. No, we that or Entourage. Those are like my my two. Oh, go- yeah. Entourage is a great show. Big Entourage. Yeah, hard to beat. Uh, all right. Oh, jo- one last question, Josh. You were traded for Eric Carlson, so I feel like we have to ask you yeah. what your thoughts are of him now being in the same conference as the Ottawa Senators. Um, honestly, I haven't thought about it for a second. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, cool. I mean, um, we didn't really get to. I think I played against him once, um, or maybe twice. Obviously, I didn't play against him last year. That was hurt, but um, yeah, he uh, he's like back to his old self right now, and. Um, it's exciting and it's, I think it's good for the league. And, um, I mean, yeah, I guess I'm excited to play against them, but, uh, other than that, I don't have too much to say about it. Fair <laughs> enough. It's okay. Yeah. Um, gentlemen, unless you have other questions, I will let uh, Josh go for, he's got to walk the dog. Let him go. Thanks for doing it, man. Thank, and thanks. For, <laughs> you're part of the hundredth episode. So big day around yeah. for us. Yeah. That's thank you right. very much. Uh, thank you. We needed a, a nay one guest, and that's who we uh, Bobby immediately said, "Well, we got to get Josh on." That's yeah. how it worked out. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Appreciate that. Got gotcha, you, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Wally. Thanks, Josh. Uh, <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing you in Ottawa soon, and uh, good luck this season. We'll uh, we'll reach back out and get a chance to chat with you during the season, if that's all right. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I appreciate. it. I'll see you guys soon. See you, man. Uh, okay. There goes Josh Norris. Uh, thank you to him. Um, one of the good ones. He's just, you know, what Josh is, is just a simply good guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's not you know a lot of people like that but he is just one of those genuinely good people i just wanted to he is so um so if anyone's concerned about his shoulder i mentioned so my older brother jeff was uh, josh was playing the hunt i think last week and he said he came up to the tee and saw him hit have you played with him before bob you golfed with josh before i haven't golfed with josh no he no. hits a i guess he was hitting like 330 off the tee just <laughs> bombing it yeah, I would imagine he, I would imagine he likes it pretty good. Yeah. So you're saying Jeff York's an insider? He's now an insider, <laughs> <laughs> hockey insider. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah I can't yeah, wait yeah. for the two of you to own the team. Me, me neither, man. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, any updates on that before we go here? Uh, I I don't think ownership's gonna. The papers are probably gonna get signed till. Like until the keys get handed over, I'm I'm thinking it's going to be middle of September now. I think there's 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 more things to go on here, and I I'm looking from what I'm told, it's a mid it's kind of a mid December, sorry mid not December mid yeah. mid September that the team technically is going to uh, to change hands if right. all if all things go well. Okay, well we look forward to your showing us your office tour. Okay. Um, with that, boys, I'll bid you. Hey, you have your own show next week, just so you know. Am just two of us? Point? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's your let's show. Let's go, Bob. Let's go. Hey, I'll send you the nerd report on the weekend. It's gonna be it's gonna be detailed. I love I, it. 
I just like to point out in case uh, you're listening to this on podcast, Bob's face got as happy as I've seen him when I said that I would not be on the show. No, no, no. It's just yeah. because it's time you lit to up. Hey, I, I, I'm in third place in the standings on appearances on our own show. I'm excited to run. <laughs> I'm going to run what's, You know what's going to happen? Eh? We're going to get Wally off the show, and we're going to have we'll have Carl on as our first guest, and <laughs> Alfie, <laughs> Pierre. Yeah. We're everyone's. Uh, Pierre's coming on for sure. If Wally's <laughs> off. If you get Pierre on, I will. I'll. I will not bother doing another show. <laughs> uh, but I have questions we'll for you the week after. after. Yeah, safe yeah. to say you'll be back the week after. Uh, I'll leave you some questions. Perfect. Uh, all right, boys. Uh, thank you for everybody in the chat. I appreciate it uh, as always. A uh, huge day. And so, uh, and to all of you who have been around to watch us for a hundred episodes, we thank you uh, very deeply from the bottom of our hearts. So, gentlemen, uh, we'll see you. Well, I won't see you, but a hundred and one is up to you. Next week. Cheers, fellas. See you, boys. Have a good one. Have a good one. Coming in hot is brought to you by Botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.